Hello everyone uh, who's joined us today. A warm welcome to MUNA, the MUNA online presentation preparation workshop. My name is Anthony Mayer and I'm a Rotarian in District 9820 since 2002 and a volunteer on the Model United Nations Assembly Committee for, committee for 11 years now. Um, I'm currently a member of the Rotary E Club of Latitude 38 and I will be your host and facilitator today. And I will be moderating with Helen O'Brien, my MUNA committee colleague from the Rotary Club of Terelgan. To make the best use of um, your time here today and before our MUNA Chair Di Harrison officially opens this workshop, uh, I'd like to do a little housekeeping before we get started. To keep the quality of the sound high and during this recorded meeting, please mute yourself when you are not sharing. I may also mute the room if necessary, if this helps to eliminate background noise and any disruptive audio feedback. But please remember to unmute yourself if you are invited to share. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box and we will reply to them directly, or we may bring them up during the presentation if necessary, or if we have time, well, we, we will have time at the end for questions if they aren't covered during the presentation. Uh, feel free to use the reaction button sensibly and respectfully. Um, and if asked for input by one of the presenters. So you'll notice on the screen, the mute button is there. Uh, please, if you can show your faces, especially if you're going to talk and you'll notice that the chat box is there. Understand that this workshop is being recorded for the purpose of training and for those who are unable to join us today and we are running a timed agenda, you will be able to replay this presentation to clarify any points at a later date. So don't worry if you don't catch some of the first uh, items first time around. I'll now hand over to District 982 MUNA Chair Di Harrison, who is a Gippsland Community Leadership alumni from 2010, a qualified teacher, and the current president of the Rotary Club of Maui. Di has been involved with MUNA for over eight years and taken on the role of chair at the end of 2019. It is with great pride and pleasure that I hand over to Di and, and begin this workshop. Thank you very much, Anthony, for that really great introduction. So welcome everyone to the 2021 MUNA Activity Online Workshop and thank you for your support and interest. And as Anthony has done uh, an introduction of me, I don't need to introduce myself again. Um, so the aim for running the workshop today is to introduce key members of the MUNA committee explain the resolution which is the, with the, which is the protection of global climate for present and future generations. To understand the adjudication of videos submitted in response to the resolution and how they'll be scored and the online voting process. Um, also, we'll be covering how to prepare the video for submission and that will be explained to all stakeholders, delegations, school counsellors, Rotarians and pres parents and guardians to understand the process. And lastly, there'll be time for questions. So um, as Anthony has said, the, the workshop is being recorded as a resource for delegations to go back and have a look at what we actually said and to take in the important information. So to begin, I'd like to introduce Elf Rayner. Uh, Elf is a Rotarian from the Rotary Club of Casey and he's been on the MUNA committee for probably as long as Anthony, I think. Um, Elf has had uh, an extensive career with the United Nations, the Australian government, non-governmental organisations generally known as NGOs and various other international organisations and working in the fields of migration management, human rights, refugees, peacekeeping and development. Elf will explain the resolution and provide background information and important points for consideration to assist delegates to prepare a response from the point of view of the UN member nation they represent. Uh, the next person we have is Kate Mayer. Welcome Kate, a non-Rotarian, but has close links with members who are Rotarians. Kate has been involved with MUNA 
for the past four years in the role of adjudicator, a role she is very well qualified for as she is a practicing lawyer. I'm very pleased that Kate has volunteered to be an adjudicator again this year. Kate will explain the adjudication process how points will be scored and will provide insights as to how to debate effectively. And as Anthony has already introduced himself, uh, I don't need to say too much, except he's the all rounder technological wizard who makes everything he does look easy. So um, I'll hand it over now to Elf for his presentation. Hey, thank you very much, Di. Uh, you know, just bear with me while I, uh Pull up the resolution. Okay, my PowerPoint presentation. And uh, no, no. Right. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. And uh, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are going to be going through uh, uh, a few slides here talking about uh, climate change and uh, uh, what it is, how it affects us, and uh, what we can do about it uh, from the point of view of the work that you as students will have to do in preparing your reports. Okay, well, here we go. Uh, this is what we will want to do, understand the problem, because, you know, we can't really work out a solution unless we know what the problem is. Make sense of the resolution that has been presented to us, uh, understand what needs to be done. Your task, of course, is going to be to research and understand your country's position, uh, uh, seeing that you're representing, uh, uh, in terms of two, you're representing a country of the United Nations, and find out in particular where your country stands on this particular issue, and then prepare your video depicting how your country is dealing with climate change or how it plans to deal with it going forward. Okay, what is climate change? I think you know, it's important that we have a common understanding of this. Uh, it's been described as one of the greatest challenges of our time. And I think that's not uh, overstating it at all. Uh, and we're, but climate change essentially is uh, changes in the weather patterns that we've been experiencing, as well as the related changes in the oceans, the land surfaces, ice sheets, and so on. So what does it do? Well, essentially, it just destabilizes the Earth's temperature equilibrium. Now, if the equilibrium of any aspect of the Earth's uh, uh, features is, is, uh, is disturbed, then we are in serious problem, in serious trouble, okay? Uh, because the energy balance in this case and therefore the temperature of the earth changes. The, now, uh, there are things we can see, the, the effects of climate change, you know, th th these are on a global scale, right? No country is immune from it. Uh, we have some direct impacts that we can see like rising temperatures, as, uh, increases in uh, rises in sea levels, in ocean temperatures, We've been experiencing extreme weather events, bushfires that are becoming more frequent and more severe. The uh, glaciers have been shrinking, permafrost has been thawing, and these are some of the things that can actually, you cannot reverse, at least not within our lifetime, that's for sure. Then there are the indirect benefits that you may or may not see. There's in some parts of the world, there's hunger, water crisis, and I know that in uh, in, in at least uh, some parts of the world, uh, wars have already actually been fought of uh, access to water. Uh, there are the health risks because of pollution and the heat waves. There are the economic costs of trying to deal with uh, the damage caused. We have loss of biodiversity. You know, our flora and our fauna cannot adapt quickly enough to this. And we know that pretty well in Australia. Uh, the acidification of the oceans is killing off marine life, uh, both animals and vegetation. We have more, more droughts. Uh, deserts are expanding. There's damage to the ecosystems, such as the Great Barrier Reef, Kakadu National Park. 
gave us a rainforest. I mean, it's a long list of things. So this is only just, just a few, you know, samples of what's what's been happening and it continues to happen. So what is causing all this? Well, it just comes down to one lot of things, greenhouse gas emissions, mainly from human activities. Okay. Uh, we're using large quantities of fossil fuels. We have been cutting our forests down. There, there are agricultural practices which are damaging to the environment and a warning that's been issued to us and we really should take very, very seriously. If greenhouse gas emissions are not reduced significantly very soon, okay, we will have more warming and sea level rises for centuries. And I think it's important to note here that the point of no return is not very far away. Okay? Within this coming decade, you might reach a point where no matter what we do, we're not gonna be able to improve the situation at all. And you know, it will be downhill all the way from there. Okay. So how, how does this happen? We have what's called as the, the greenhouse effect. We're producing large quantities of gases that are going up into the atmosphere. They're not able to escape. And therefore, the heat is trapped in the atmosphere. The results is greenhouse effect. I experienced this in a very small way when I was living when I was with the Australian Embassy in Germany, living in Bonn, Bonn is surrounded by hills, and that created what's known as a heat inversion. So Bonn, the city, was warmer than the surrounding countryside because of that. Okay. Greenhouse effect is you know, a similar phenomenon, but for different reasons and on a much larger scale, and of course it's very, very dangerous. So which gases, some of the leading suspects are these. We've got carbon dioxide, and that's produced through volcano eruptions, respiration, deforestation, burning of fossil fuels, et cetera. And as, as humans, we've increased the CO2 concentration uh, by 47% since the Industrial Revolution. So another culprit is methane which is produced by decomposing waste in agriculture, livestock, and so on, nitrous oxides, and CFCs. You remember the CFCs a few years ago were uh, actually uh, um, creating uh, holes in the ozone layer. Now, we've managed to correct that through concerted action on a global basis, but we're still producing lots of them, and they're still damaging the environment. So. Who are the biggest polluters? Well, uh, I think it's not no surprises there. It's the industrialized countries, the more the developed countries, and uh, and you see down on a per capita basis that uh, the four leading contenders here are U.S., China, India, and Australia. But on the other side, of course, we have the most vulnerable countries that probably have bear, been bearing the the brunt of a lot of these uh, 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 the damage we're doing, and that is a uh, place like Cambodia, in fact, all of the countries of Southeast Asia, as well as Bangladesh, India, and right in our own backyard here, close in the Pacific, uh, many island nations have suffered the impact of uh, climate change with uh, uh, many countries actually uh, going underwater. Uh, at least, you know, uh, partly anyway, because of sea level rises. Okay, so the question now is, what should we do? Can we stop it? And if so, how? Well, uh, the UN has been trying to get uh, action on these, you know, going way, way back. Uh, at least, uh, you know, back in the 90s, uh, there, was, there were conferences and uh, all sorts of meetings trying to head this off. And we've heard about Kyoto and, we've got, uh, and Rio and so on. But in 2015, okay, countries got together in Paris, 196 parties, which included not, not only the countries of the UN, but a few other parties as well. 
And the, they decided that we really needed to limit global warming to or below two degrees Celsius, preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius compared with pre-industrial levels. And, you know, and the Industrial Revolution started in about 1750s. Um, secondly, we need to achieve a climate neutral world by 2050. And thirdly, we needed a framework to assist the countries that need assistance, whether in terms of money, technical, uh, or capacity building support. Okay. Now, just a few years later, in 2018, the International Panel on Climate Change produced a special report. And as a result of their research, what they came up with is the, the, the finding that really many of the adverse effects of climate change are going to be felt at well below 1.5 degrees centigrade. Okay. So we can forget about the two degrees. So it's the 1.5 degrees we now have to work with. Uh, and that report also recommended a global net zero emissions target by 2050. And that's not all that far away. You know, we're already in 2021. Okay, now the UN has passed resolution after resolution on this. Not a lot has changed. Some countries have taken them ser more seriously than others. Uh, the resolution that's been the, the most recent one in December 2019 goes over the same territory. And uh, I, I don't propose to read the full resolution now. You have access to it. It's on the website. And you should have read it by now. Um, but doesn't matter if you haven't, because I'm going to tell you what the main issues are. Resolutions of this kind tend to be uh, have three components. There is the title, then you've got the preamble where the UN expresses uh, its concerns, uh, points to what's been happening, uh, background, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then comes uh, the third section, of course, to do with uh, the recommendations and what uh, the countries should actually be doing. Okay, but the central message is simply this: okay? two main items. First of all, as we've been discussing, limit the rising global temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius or less, and Secondly, achieve net zero emissions by 2050. Okay. These are the big ticket items in this exercise. This is what we really have to be putting a lot of our energies as a global community in. Uh, some of the other clauses, okay, build resilience, work cooperatively, you know, rich countries helping poorer countries, but the last one of these, full and equal participation of women, that is important. It's very important always because A, we need women's input as much as men's in this. And women are often actually the first to be affected by the effects of climate change, particularly in developing countries. Okay, so. All right, now, so what's our challenge? Well, the challenge, of course, has got to be to try and stabilize the global temperatures, eliminate all emissions of heat trapping gases, or achieve a carbon neutral society. That means that, you know, if we're going to continue to pump greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, then we're going to be doing something that counteracts that so that, you know, the net effect is zero. All right. And how do we do that? There's lots of different suggestions from around the world. Okay. Of course, some of the more important ones are here. Make sure that we generate clean energy, solar, wind, hydro, and so on. Rooftop solar, we've been quite a lot of that. 
the restoration of the forest, but by reforestation and afforestation, right? So we're going to create new forests, not, not only just replace the trees we've cut down, protect the forests, produce hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is an important possible assistance in, in, in this fight against climate change uh, because it, it has, you know, it is clean energy and, you know, the, the output is water. The use of electric vehicles, so we remove from circulation all the you know the petrol the diesel guzzling vehicles that we're using we're using for so long uh, uh, find the carbon capture and storage facilities uh, manage our wetlands in such a way that uh, uh, you know not only do we do preserve what we have but we expand them if possible because they are great at uh, um, uh, actually storing uh, carbon. Civil culture is something that's been tested, actually, it's a bit of an experiment in some parts of the world where you integrate the management of the forest with pastures to create a sustainable symbiotic system. And uh, you, you, apparently it's been quite successful. I'm not sure how well that would work in Australia, but certainly in, uh, uh, in Latin America, it seems to be working uh, quite well. And so it's got great promise. Now, many other things you can do, but these are the, probably the more important ones. And uh, I even saw a, re a reference to uh, some research being done to mimic the effect of, uh, uh, of, of plant leaf in uh, photosynthesis, because that produces oxygen and stores carbon. Okay? So uh, there's, you know, a, a lot of good work is going on around the world. All right, so what's the UN doing? Well, the UN set up this, uh, what's called the Framework Convention on Climate Change. And it's been organizing uh, very conferences of uh, what they call Conference of Parties or COP, where countries get together, discuss the issue and try and come up with some solutions. Now, in uh, the next uh, COP is uh, in Glasgow in November, so it's only six, less than six months away. And these are some of the items on the agenda. Okay. One is carbon market mechanisms. That is one country can buy carbon credits from another country. And if you think about this and you're a developing country and you've got uh, land where you can maybe create a forest, then that might be a big money spinner for you because you could sell your, the credits that you gain that way to another country that wants to continue with its industrial uh, emissions. Okay, so, you know, the, the, I think at every stage here, you should be looking at the silver lining in this as well, okay? Um, this also uh, the issue of funding for loss and damage. Some of the countries that have been suffering um, the or the, the damage of climate, uh, coming from climate change may be entitled to uh, compensation. And to this end, the, the UN has already set up a um, a fund with a, a target of one hundred billion dollars, but they're looking to create a higher target for 2025 uh, at this particular meeting later in the year. And then uh, they need to look at nature-based solutions, how, for example, how forests, agriculture, and ecosystems can be used to absorb carbon, because they're very good at that. But we've got to be smart. We've got to be doing the right things rather than cut, continue to cut down forests willy-nilly. We just think about how we can uh, use them more effectively. Okay, your task. Now you as the, uh, the students that uh, have been tasked with preparing this video in this competition, I think it's, it's useful probably if you imagine that you are the climate change minister for the country you represent. You're preparing this report for the Conference of Parties in 26, later in the year. And so what can you say 
about your country's performance today? It's been good, bad, indifferent. What has it done? What doesn't? What hasn't it done? What hasn't it done that it should have done? And what it targets or strategies it has adopted in order to reduce carbon emissions by how much? And has it set itself any targets to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 or earlier? I know some countries have been balking at that because you know governments by their nature look to, put to political advantage and, and uh, anything that could affect their, their electoral prospects uh, tends to uh, get shoved to the side. Well, in preparing your report, you're going to have to think carefully about where your country is at. And the, the first point to start, of course, is to learn as much as possible about the country that you are representing. A lot of things, the population, you know, the composition of the population, the size, the economy, its geographic position, the role of women in that society, okay? the industrial base that it has or doesn't have, uh, and uh, well, now what are the main industries? How do people make a living? Is it a nomadic, residential, um, highly industrialized, not so industrialized, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, try and work out what this attitude is to climate change. Is it you know, really key to do something about it? Is it, uh, is it a denier, climate change denier? Uh, number three was what climate change related damage has it suffered? Because yeah. some countries definitely have suffered more than others, so certainly on a per capita basis. And uh, there may be, there may be uh, room for them to claim some climate compensation. The key activities that contribute to climate change, particularly as they relate to your country. How did it vote? on climate change resolutions. Now, that's not so difficult to find out because uh, there's a, a, a lots of information on how countries voted on particular issues at the, on the United Nations website, the UN, <coughs> pardon me, UN.org. And uh, going to the UNFCC uh, website, and see if your country has, has actually submitted a report and what targets it has put forward for uh, 2030. Okay. A number, number of countries have produced reports and they're easily available, some haven't. So have a, have a look there. Um, so addressing the other key recommendations. Now, if you're a, uh, a rich country, a developed country, then one of the things you have to consider is what assistance are actually proposing to give and to whom, and think about your alliances, partnerships, whether they uh, the regional, bilateral, multilateral, or global. I, I think that uh, uh, this is a, a sort of thing that uh, because it's uh, uh, on such a, a huge scale, it's important that you actually uh, understand that you need, countries need to work together to achieve a, a result. Well, if you're a developing or a vulnerable country, then you know, you got to consider, well, what, what change, or what, uh, what, what's climate change done to you? What damage have you suffered? And what assistance do you need? And whether it's in terms of money, the technology transfer, skills, or some, some, or some other thing, from whom should you claim this? Just from the fund set up by the United Nations or should you be dealing direct with um, uh, individual countries or groups of countries? And again, alliances and partnerships that you're going to be needing. If you're already in serious trouble, for example, your, your, your population, your, your, country, your, your land has been submerged, you no longer produce enough food, population starving, your fishing grounds have been destroyed, then, uh, think, well, okay, who's actually responsible for your problem? Sometimes you can identify the responsible. Sometimes, you know, it's going to be too difficult to point to any one um, country. But, um, and also, are your citizens becoming climate change refugees? I've seen this in, 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 in East Africa, uh, where people having to walk off the land because, you know, 15 years of drought caused by climate change, 
they simply cannot survive. They can't grow food. Their, their cattle died. The crops withered. And what kind of assistance do you need? From whom? Okay. Same question as before. All right. And but but if your country is in denial or simply not interested in doing anything about this, then I mean it may still be possible for you to put in a decent report, but you've got to be quite specific about what your objections are. Yeah. You have to have reasons to explain why your country cannot or will not take any remedial action to mitigate the, the climate change and its impacts, okay? So you, you need to think very, very carefully about this. And uh, uh, just because your country is in denial doesn't mean you can't produce a, an interesting report. I mean, I may not agree with you, but, but here it is. Okay, so in, in preparing your report, make sure that you have a full understanding of the issue. You, know, you can read the original resolution by going to un.org. Um, some other useful sources include uh, the CIA World Factbook. There's an awful lot of information there on individual countries. Uh, look up UNHCR, that's the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. Uh, climate councils, there are various research organizations in every country, uh, including these. The, uh, have a look at the IPCC reports and, of course, the UNCC, that's the United Nations Forum Convention on Climate Change website. Now, you'll be working with at least one partner, agree on sharing your research and preparation tasks. If possible, it's not a bad idea to involve some of your you know, um, other students. Uh, in, uh, in this exercise and helping you to do some of the research and discuss ideas, okay, about what you can, what you can do and what your country can do that uh, you can include in your report. Uh, you will have a counselor or a teacher that's actually supposed to be supervising your, uh, your work. Make sure you consult frequently with that person and that, uh, you know, you, you bounce ideas back and forth. And, don't, you know, don't be afraid to be innovative. Okay. Sometimes, you know, a brainstorming uh, can produce some pretty good stuff. Now, contact the embassy or consulate for more information. Uh, many embassies have got what's known as a cultural attaché. And the, the job of the cultural attaché is to actually produce and distribute information about their country. So, you may get lucky and get lots and lots of uh, information. For example, if you were to ring the German embassy, you would get an excellent welcome. They'd give you lots of information. They'd be happy to talk to you. You can even they talk to senior staff about the issues that you are dealing with. And uh, the, uh, but you know, I'm not sure what kind of reaction you get from somebody like China, but that's enough. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's certainly worth contacting them, find out uh, what, uh, uh, what, how they can help you. Uh, it's important that you're clear about your country's position, of course, and uh, this is one way of doing that. Yeah. You, the alliances, you have to decide what, the, what, what you need. Uh, and don't forget that there's already quite a lot of bodies that uh, uh, that that uh, are in existence and that you could uh, utilize for your purposes in this exercise. For example, in Africa, you've got ECOWAS, that's the Economic Community of West African States, SADC, that's the Southern African Development Community, the, and then ESE, this East, Afri East African Community, uh, which makes up, made up by Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, I think, and Rwanda and Burundi and so on. So uh, uh, then in Asia, you've got ASEAN, that's uh, the 10 countries of South Asian nations. Um, then in West Indies, you've got CARICOM, that's, that's the Caribbean community. In the Americas, you've got FELEC, UNASUR, OAS, that's the Organization of American States, and so on. So there's lots of bodies there that uh, you could tap into. 
uh, and finally be aware of spatial situations for example if you're looking at the middle east and north africa they may be producing large quantities of oil so if they have to stop that then there's a huge impact that uh, they will be suffering they may have security problems including possible insurgencies and i know there is one there's in libya and in other places that could act as a, a bar to any action that you might be proposing. So you, need, you may need to think about how to overcome those kind of obstacles. And of course, political instability is a feature of many countries, unfortunately. Okay. So uh, as you prepare your report, try to see the broader picture in the longer term. What's likely to happen if you don't do this now? This is something you gotta be conscious of all the time. If we don't do this, you know, what are the consequences just further down the track? And once again, think about any, you know, the, the silver lining, are there economic benefits here? Uh, for example, exporting clean energy, climate change technology, or as we were talking about earlier, you know, building up carbon credits that you can sell to other countries. And remember that carrying on as usual is no longer an option. It may soon be too late. So again, you have to be conscious of that from your country's perspective. Now, you, you have, um, I understand you have a, a total, a maximum of five minutes for your video. So use the time wisely, all right? Here's a, a number of useful websites. There'll be many, many more. I'm sure you're all expert at doing research online. Just be careful that uh, you, um, <laughs> uh, you know, because there is a lot of misinformation online as well, as, as you'll be well aware. So I'm sure you, you, you know how to watch out for uh, fake news and all that. Okay. But above all, have fun and best of luck to you all. Okay, well done, Alf. Thank you so much for a very comprehensive um, uh, view that you managed to keep within the time frame that we allocated you. So well done. You've offered a lot of gems there to our delegations. Um, hopefully, they'll be feeling uh, quite inspired that the task is very manageable. Uh, as, as we've recorded this, uh, the delegations are very welcome to come and have a look and and um, and uh, recall what, what it was that Alf actually gave you on a silver platter to guide you. So thank you very much, Elf. And um, according to the run sheet, we're now going over to Kate Mayer for uh, the adjudicating. So welcome, Kate, and over to you. Thank you, Di. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the rubric, which is what we'll be assessing you when we're judging your video submissions. And then I'll go over the awards. So you want to keep that in mind. This is what you're um, keeping in the back of your mind as you're preparing your presentations. So uh, this is the rubric here. You can see we've got four different categories that we will be judging you on. The first one there is your title. That's the first thing that we are going to see before we uh, even watch your video. So you want to make sure your title is super engaging and catchy. Have a bit of fun with it. Draw us in right from the start, from the minute that we read your title. Uh, you can think of your title uh, in uh, as like you think of a contention when you're writing an essay. So it gives us an idea about what you're going to be arguing, what you're going to be presenting right from the get go. Uh, the next point there is the actual content and your debate points. Now, this is your opportunity to show off all of your hard work. Show us and impress us uh, with all of the research that you've done. As Alf has just shown you, there is a wealth of research on this topic. It's a really good resolution this year, which means uh, it's gonna be a really hot competition. So you need to make sure that you're on top of the research and that you're uh, relying upon the most up-to-date research. As Alf said, this, this topic has been the subject of a number of uh, real UN resolutions already. So you can use that. You can go straight there and find out what your delegation would be arguing, what they've argued in the past. Um, and I think I think Alf did mention this as well, but make sure you're relying on the most up to date uh, research, so you're not relying on out outdated submissions. 
And another point that you need to keep in mind when you're when you're structuring your content is you you're coming from a specific country. So you're looking at climate change overall, and then you need to be very specific and realistic about the country that you're from. Now, when you're relying on sources and statistics, there's going to be a lot out there. So you need to be very careful with what you choose and make sure that it has a point and that it is backing up what you're saying. So you can, you, you can use figures, you can use numbers, they can be really powerful. And you can also use anecdotes and real world stories from your countries. With such a compelling and com uh, powerful topic such as climate change, I hope to see some, some real world stories and examples of how it's affected your country. That's a really powerful and strong way to make, make your points. Now, the next point is on your presentation. Just because you're online doesn't mean we're not going to be looking at how well you're presenting and how engaging you are. So you can still, you'll still have your notes and your speech, just like you would if you were at the UN assembly but you get the advantage of editing this year. So we hope to see a very well-practiced presentation and we want to see some really good editing skills. I'm sure all of you will have better uh, use of the technology than I do. So I'm sure it won't be too hard to impress us, but we wanna we want see some good editing. We want smooth, clear transitions. If you're going to be relying on, uh, if you're going to use uh, multimedia or anything like that it needs to be well done and you need to watch watch over your video lots of times uh, and practice your speech you you have that advantage it's not live it's not in front of an audience like it normally would be so use that to your advantage uh, and make it a really really strong presentation you only have five minutes so I hope every single moment of your video will be making a strong point. You have to be very careful with your time because five minutes will go so quick. Now you'll see on there as well we've got a point about uh, the decorations and your your props so get into it just because it's online doesn't mean we don't want to see you dressed up so we'll hope that you'll still be dressed up in your national dress and uh, get really creative with this research the culture and the background of your country you can use things like visual backdrops we want you in your actual dress we've seen uh, lots of great things with photographs and flags and uh, their their nation food things like that in the past so you can you can include all of that in your video um, we don't want you to be too distract distracting of course you remember you are a United Nations delegate so you need to balance that creative uh, uh, costuming and things like that with your actual content because you are still advocating for a really serious topic so have a bit of fun with it be engaging and uh, make it entertaining but remember you are making uh, some really serious submissions I'm, I'm quite excited to see what you all come up with now that you've got the added bonus of editing and multimedia this year I'm I'm really excited to see what you all come up with now the last the the fourth category that we have is design and creativity so that is all about the overall presentation of your video uh, as, as we've mentioned, you need to stay within your time constraints. So you've got that five minute period. Um, make sure anything that you use, if it's a video, images, music, you get creative with that. Make sure that it is um, actually strengthening your submission and that it's relevant and uh, fits into your video. We don't want, we want to see you talking and presenting. We don't want to see a three minute clip in there that wastes all of your time. We want to, we want to see you making your points. Okay. Now, as, as we've said, this is a really relevant topic. So it's gonna be hot competition. Everybody is going to um, have a great understanding because of ALF's really thorough breakdown. Everybody's going to understand the basics of this topic. So what's gonna make you stand out is that extra level of research and specificity in your research as well. So that means it needs to relate to your delegation uh, and advocate for, for your specific country. Okay, so that's pretty much the rubric that we'll be relying on. All the adjudicators will be using that and giving you 
five, four, three, two, one, or uh, no marks in each category. And those points will then add up uh, to go and decide who is the best overall delegation. So that's our number one award uh, is the, the overall winner. And then there's also a runner up. So second place for the second delegation. Uh, the other awards include the Peace Shield. Now, this is a really interesting one because it's, it's who uh, best uh, advocates for world peace. Now, this is different to the best overall delegation because it's not um, it's not about the overall picture, but it's really about, did you get to the heart of arguing for world peace? Now, don't be restrained by your country on this. I think in the past, we actually had North Korea win the uh, peace shield. So don't be constrained by your country. Anyone can win this uh, as, long as, as long as you're passionate and compelling with your arguments. Uh, the next award is the best national costume. So this one's obvious. It's how well you get into the theme of your uh, country. Be creative, think, do some research and look at the different cultural dress. We've seen um, people do modern dress of their country and we've also seen people do uh, the traditional cultural costumes as well. Uh, so uh, in the past, the Rotary Clubs have been super helpful with this. And they'll, if you, if you ask and reach out for that support, they will help you uh, in putting together your costumes or giving you ideas. So make sure you rely on them for that. Now, the last award is the People's Choice Award. So this will be voted on by everybody, not just by the adjudicators. It will be uh, all of the Rotary members and all of our, the committee, they will vote on this one. So... Uh, this one will go to whoever's the most engaging and whoever really presents uh, a, a strong submission in their video. So perhaps um, just keep in mind, you want to be entertaining. This, this one, you never know who will win this one. There, there will be a variety of judges. So it's going to be, uh, it'll be anonymously done. All of our voting will go through online this year. Our, our tech wizard will make sure, make sure of that. So you'll be, um, we'll all be using the same criteria, but it will be really fair in that there's going to be a variety of judges from different backgrounds. So they'll all be looking for different things. Okay, now just some general tips before I finish up. Uh, make sure you practice, practice, practice. Practice your speech before you even start filming and then get in front of the camera get your angles, test your audio, listen back to it. See, how do I, how do I sound on, on camera? How do I look? Um, make sure you watch it back multiple times before you get to that final video. Okay. And now just lastly, in terms of feedback, we won't be giving uh, individual feedback. However, if, if you would like some, feel free to contact us after the adjudication process because we want you to develop your public speaking and your advocacy skills as much as possible. So if you are interested in continuing your public speaking journey and your debating journey, feel free to reach out to us. I'm sure all the other adjudicators are the same and they're happy to provide that specific feedback to you so that you can continue developing and getting even better at debating and public speaking. That's all from me. Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Kate. They, again, another uh, very um, inspiring um, presentation, which is very clear in what the adjudicators will be uh, looking for and how everyone will be assessed with their um, their debate. So uh, thank you for your time. We are running a little bit late, but it really doesn't matter because what, what you're presenting is really important information. So now I'm going to um, invite Anthony to uh, give you some really great pointers on actually how to present that video. The format is really important because you don't want to spend all that time preparing and then have a dud video. Okay, over to you, Anthony. G'day, gang. Uh, do apologise. I do believe that someone is mowing lawns at the front of my house, so I apologise for that. Now, one of the things, just before we jump into the format, because we're right on the tail end of this now, is one of the things we haven't discussed is who is running this program for you? Now, who is Rotary? So what I'm going to do is just play you a quick little video and just explain a little bit about what Rotary as an organisation does around the world.
possibilities are all around us. Everywhere we look, we see opportunity. We see potential in unexpected places. And when we share our knowledge, vision and connections, we turn great ideas into action. In communities all around the world that we call home, like transferring an old bus to feed hungry children, or providing life-saving equipment to those who need it most. From fighting disease to rebuilding schools. Together, we can really make change happen. Because we are Rotary. We are people of action. Get involved today at rotary9820.org.au or get involved with District Youth Program MUNA at MUNA9820. .org.au Can't drive. So that was that was just a little video, just a one and a half minute video about Muna, explaining who is it that's running this program and what we do. So any of you that don't know anything about Muna, that's what Rotary International and Rotary does. And you're the, the program that you're in today is being run by District 9820, which is the district pretty much Mornington, Mornington Peninsula uh, and Gippsland. So um, back to the format. So this is really unique. We are very lucky in that the way that we're doing this format this year, it's going to be by video. And normally you would have seen some of the, the promotion that we've done. You've seen that it's a big room full of people. We sit down and it's run very much like the United Nations. But we're not doing that this year, we're doing it via video. And you, so you have a lot more opportunity to use technology as Kate really well, uh, Kate explained really well. So just quickly, the, the penalty, sorry, the, the um, time for your video is five minutes and there are time penalties. As you'll see, one of the things that you'll notice if you wanna go back and look is that the award rubric is available on the MUNA website. So if you go to MUNA, 9820.org.au forward slash awards, you can actually download that rubric as a PDF. Now, as it stands at the moment, we're going to have to turn that into a digital format for our judges so they can judge online, but that's pretty much the process. So if, if you are doing your video and the time is outside of the brackets that's in that rubric, you'll get penalized. Um, obviously you should have your costume. Um, I would say no more than 30 seconds. Look, there's no hard rule on that, but, but don't put too much of other content in there. By all means, you know, use props, have, have third parties, interview people, use news snippets, news snippets, photos, anything you like in there. But as Kate said, it has to be relevant to the staging and the position or argument of your country. Now for the technical part of this, please make sure that your videos aren't too high resolution. So we don't need um, Apple, we don't need 4K, we don't need um, uh, Apple Pro. You just need a 1080p, so that's high definition, 1080p is fine. You can set your phone to HD if you're using your phone. The format will be landscape 16-9 ratio, that's 16-9, 30 frames per second is fine, and HVAC encoding. Now, if you're not sure if any of that, you can obviously get in touch with me and we can help you out. The other thing I'd like you to be aware of is that there are three main places that we communicate with you today or, or during the process of MUNA. One of them is obviously our Facebook page, which you, some of you may or may not have seen. The other one is the group and you would have got an email. I noticed that today some of the students that are on have already asked to join that group. One of the things you should do is directly go and join that group because what that allows you to do is network with each other. You get to meet each other, you get to show each other what you're doing, you get to talk about the, the resolution, you know, if you've got any issues, you've got, you've got like-minded countries. So it's a chance for all of the people across the district who are doing this MUNA um, exercise to actually meet each other. Also, you could um, go to our webpage. So anything that happens will, will be updated on our webpage. 
Um, during the process of you making your videos, because you've got quite a lot of time now, we opened up the registrations to the end of the month. So the end of this month registrations, and then you've got nearly, nearly another two months to make your video. So in that time, I would encourage you to go along to your Rotary Club, play at your club, play at your school. You know, if your delegation might be two people, but you could go to your school's AV department and maybe get somebody who's good at using Adobe Premiere. So tools that you might use to, to create this video would be Adobe Premiere, maybe Canva. Canva has an ability to edit, web, uh, edit video. Um, so there are some tools you can use to edit your videos and make them look good with titles, et cetera, and maybe involve other people in your class or in your school. Uh, the closed Facebook group and the Facebook page are there for you to post on. We would love to see snippets of how you're doing. We'd love to see your costume. We'd love to see some healthy competition between the uh, rival countries. So feel free to use that social media platform. And this is for councillors as well, to use that platform to tell us how you're going through this process. And there will possibly be, I might run some live events. And when we get to, to the um, voting platform, there will be some more education. It'll either be a video or it will be another live event where I explain how we upload the videos. Um, the platform is expensive, so we can't run it for lots of months. We're only running it for two months. It won't be open until the middle or towards the end of July. As, as per the MUNA um, webpage, where it's got our calendar links. That is it. Oh, there is one more thing, guys. Any of your social posts, please use the hashtag D9820 MUNA 2021. The, by doing that, we can just do a search online for anyone who's doing um, MUNA content for this year and we can find it. So even if you don't post on our page or you post on your own, as long as, it's, as, long as your privacy settings are allow us to see it, we can see the things that you're doing and share that with others as well. Um, so lastly, we're going to go to questions. So we're going to open this up now to questions. So we have uh, 16 people on board today. Are there any questions from any of the delegates or I don't know if there's any councillors in here. I haven't checked the list off. Do we have any questions? So uh, personal ones that I can laugh at don't count. So if there are no questions, oh, so um, Miana Cameron is saying, wondering how do we choose our country? So what I'll get you to do, I'll just screen share now with you, Miana, and I'll show you. So I did actually notice that we have 16, um, we do have 16 registered uh, country, we do have 16 registered schools, but we only have about 13, I think off the top of my head, um, countries registered. So. Uh, obviously, some of the countries haven't registered. So I'll show you how to do that now. If you go to our website, so um, just a nod, Helen, can you see me opening our, um, thanks. So I'm just going to the website and then I'm gonna go to the MUNA 2021 page. I can either go to the landing page or I can type up the top directly MUNA 2021. And then I'm just gonna scroll down. Um, Muna preparation. Oh, it occurs to me the link isn't there. So you should have got the link in an email. What I might do quickly is give you that link right now. So um, it should have come to you in the email that I sent out last week. I'll put it in the chat in a second. Um, okay, Miana. Miana, so I'm not sure if I'm saying your name properly. Sorry about that. Are there any other questions? I'm just looking that up now while I'm waiting, Miana. I'll see if I can do it before we finish. Any other questions? Okay. Um, Di at the, oh, hang on, it relates to adjudication. So the question here is, as it relates to adjudication, can you please discuss the scoring with relation to the representation of country views, i.e. should we be representative of the country, of the current government policy or societal views generally? Kate, are you happy to answer that one? Yes, that's a great question, Sebastian. So there's two parts to this. One, it does need to be realistic and something that your UN delegate would be arguing for. So it, that means it, it can't be re 
too idealistic and something that your country would just never vote on. Um, however, balance that with a little bit more progressive view. So if your, um, your delegation is somewhere where there's some unre there's political unrest and your their society is pushing for uh, some more progressive government um, action on climate change, you can use that in your arguments and make, make those submissions. So we do want to see really progressive and contemporary arguments um, balanced with what your country has voted for in the past. And there might be legislation in your country um, that speaks to this specifically. So check that. Um, we So in, in summary, we want it to be as progressive and compelling as possible, balanced with the realistic situation of your, your country. Awesome. Thank you, Kate. That's fantastic. And... Um, so, uh, Miana, you'll notice that I gave you a link for that. It's um, I gave you a link in the chat. So you can go in. If you haven't done your country preference, you can go in and do that. Are there any other questions from the floor? Now, what I would really love to do is everyone that's here, could you just give me your cameras on for a minute? Because I'd love to take a screenshot of everybody that's here. So can we just get everybody turning their cameras on for a minute? Fantastic. I'm just going to do a screenshot. Can we get everybody just turning their cameras on for a minute, please? <laughs> Your hair looks great, Sebastian. It's all good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You're welcome, mate. Okay, one more, Sunil. Sunil and Razma. If you could just turn your cameras on for me so I can get a quick screen grab, I would be very grateful. One more, Razna, you there, Razna? All of you have done a great job for sitting through. There's lots of content to get through in there today. You've done a great job, thank you. We really look forward to hearing your arguments. And Anthony, if, if uh, now is the time to close the workshop. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's prepared uh, for our workshop today, especially the presenters. Anthony, you've done a mountain of work in the background and I really would like to acknowledge you for that. You truly are the, the uh, digital wizard. And uh, for everyone who is here today who uh, has contributed questions and, uh, and uh, well done and thank you.